द मोस्ट कॉन्ट्रोवर्शियल फॉर्म अ प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ फिलीपींस फॉर सम हिज काइंड मर्सीफुल प्रोटेक्ट अ ग्रेट लीडर बट ऑल्सो फॉर अदर्स हिज ग्रीडी स्कैमर अ क्रूवल डिक्टेटर दिस इज द स्टोरी ऑफ Ferdinand Emmanuel Adrian Marcos Before we start let me add in this video which ever data are shown taken from different websites and all websites and sources links are given below you can always check out them we are not in favor or against of someone this is just our try to show main events of Ferdinand Marcos life just for information so without doing any further ado let's start the video Ferdinand Marcos born on September 11 1917 in the town of Serrat Ilocos Norte to Mariano Marcos and Josefa Adrilin His father Mariano Marcos was a lawyer educator a politician congressman from Ilocos Norte and his mother Josefa Adrilin was a teacher His father Mariano Marcos was executed by Filipino guerrillas in 1945 for being a Japanese propagandist and his mother uh, Josefa died in 1988 after a long hospitalization. Now let's talk about his education. Ferdinand Marcos studied law from the University of Philippines in Manila and he also became a member of Upsilon Sigma Phi. In 1939 when Ferdinand Marcos set for the bar examination he was the top notcher with the 92.35 percentage Ferdinand Marcos also received honorary doctor of laws degree in 1967 Ferdinand Marcos was not just good with the studies or books he is also good with the extracurricular activities Ferdinand Marcos was a uh, member of the uh, university's swimming boxing wrestling team he was a really good orator debater and he is also a writer of a student newspaper how good he was with the debates let me show you this clip after the attack on pearl harbor us bases in the philippines could not be defended why should we expect that in another war these bases would be more reliable That's one of the questions that I wanted to find out. <laughs> If you are going to run out on us anyway, you better let us know now. <laughs> you have You have indicated that the allegations about political repression and human rights are overblown. How then do you explain the findings of the international independent group Amnesty International which documented cases of torture, disappearances and illegal detention? Well, I'll tell you that the Amnesty International has never come to the Philippines. <laughs> That's why. What do you say to critics who say your health is poor and you won't be around very long but your wife may be? Anybody want to try me in the ring? <laughs> Now, the question is how or when Ferdinand Marcos became a national news for the first time. Ferdinand Marcos became national news for the first time in 1935 when his father Mariano Marcos lost in a national assembly election against Julio Nalan Sudan second time and that's where the time Ferdinand Marcos first shot into the national news came over the murder of Julio Nalan Sudan Ferdinand Marcos allegedly killed Julio Nalan Sudan on September 21st 1935 there are so many speculations and articles that some are saying that he really killed some are saying that he did not kill but did you remember 1917 when he born he born in 1917 and he killed someone allegedly killed someone in 1935 it means he got accused of murder when he was just 18 year old in 1938 ferdinand marcos was prosecuted for the murder of julio nalan sudan by lower court 
but supreme court overturned lower court's decision in 1940 and marcos was acquitted from all of his charges except contempt there are few really interesting thing i must share with you and i must discuss with you is that uh when he was prosecuted by the lower court and his case went into the supreme court uh he did not have any lawyer you know what because he was studying law already he himself fight his case and there is a full movie on that this is the movie i'm talking about you can always go and check out that the link will be in the description you can see that how gracefully how how nicely he conduct his own case and he won that case second thing came in my mind that so many articles was saying that uh he really killed julio nanan sudan but how he got uh released by the supreme court that's the question because at that time he was not a big shot he was not president he was not big politician he was not like big name celebrity that uh supreme court would have to listen him or he did not had any any power that time but if he would really killed then without any power he got released so it must be uh, a question that he really killed or not that's a question so it can be any propaganda or it cannot be not i am not commenting on that but i am just sharing the thought came in my mind that uh, he fought his own case and he won second thing that at that time when he was fighting uh, his case he was not a big shot he was not on big position in the country even though supreme court uh, realized that uh, he was not guilty so uh, the allegation of kill someone is really happened or not that's question we should ask and the third interesting thing is uh, he was prosecuted by the lower court in 1938 and he released in 1940 by supreme court but he got top notch uh, percentage in bar examination in 1939 it means he was studying and he was hard working in the prison in the jail when he gave exam he was already uh, a prisoner so that shows his mental stability his uh, his mental toughness he was really really tough person who likes to uh, fight against odds now let's talk about his military achievements which is really controversial but really interesting after releasing from jail he got rotc training and he served in us armed forces after the attack on pearl harbor and he served in a in a military in a force as a third lieutenant but during that time he got caught by japanese and he was taken as a prisoner by the japanese but the real controversy arises in 1942 when he was released from the prison so many speculations so many talks are going on that why he is the only one who got released some are saying that he got released because his father was the japanese propagandist and that's why he got released and some are saying that because of his good behavior they released him another controversy started when he started calling himself lieutenant colonel but according to the us data he was not lieutenant he was just a major rank the real controversy arised about his service in world war 2 and during that time during the time of 1962 he was decorated as the hero of the war in campaigns according to marcos's sources he claimed to have 33 war medals and decorations including distinguished service cross and medal of honor we try to find a real data we search a lot but as always some are against of the marcos and some are in favor of marcos so we are not going to comment about his military achievements are real or not 
But whatever happened, it happened in the favor of Marcos. He got really popular. He people started calling him a free peace hero. Before we see his political ups and downs, let's talk about his personal life first. Marcos lived with his first common law wife, Carmen Ortega, and they had three children together. But later, in 1954, Marcos married to a Imelda Trinidad, and they also had three biological child together. The first one is Bong Bong Marcos, who is current presidential candidate. Second is Emi Marcos. Third is Aaron Marcos. And later they adopted another child who is Amy Marcos. Now let's talk about his political ups and downs. Because he was presented as a war hero, World War II hero of the Philippines, he got so much popularity and Marcos is the only president who ruled Philippines for 21 years. He ruled Philippines for 1965 to 1986, including that famous Marshall era. Now, let's talk about his first term as a president. His first term was between 1965 to 1969. Because he was presented as a Philippines hero, he got so much popularity and he won that 1965 election so easily with the so many votes. As soon as he elected, he pursued really aggressive program on infrastructure. He did lot of development in infrastructure among so many of his infrastructure programs. The biggest program was cultural center of the Philippines complex and Marcos's edifice complex. Soon after he elected, another big thing he did was he started having good relationship with the officers of military and he started expanding Philippines military also. During that time, during that era, Vietnam War was going on and that time US asked Philippines to help them and Philippines started helping with the limited involvement in the Vietnam War and helping US bases and that's where the good relation between Marcos and US government started and because of that good relation and because of limited involvement in Vietnam War, US government started giving loans to the Marcos government and by that money Marcos started doing a lot of infrastructure, a lot of development. But everything was not good as it sounds. Philippines has to also face communist rebellion in the Philippines civil war which started in 1969 but it's still going on in the present. You can see here that it started with the Marcos in 1969 and it's still going on with the Duterte administration. Another big event happened with the Moro insurgency and that Moro insurgency also started in 1969 and which is still going on in the present as you can see here. So during his first term, during Marcos's first administration, he was involved in three big wars and he also took so many loans and that's where 1969 balance crisis came out. We must understand one thing whenever anybody, not a government, but anybody starts any business, why they start? They start any business, any new attempt to get reward from it. What happened in the first term was uh, there are big wars going on and uh, Marcos administration also got loan from the US but because of the war and because of the civil inside war the output what they are expecting they did not got it and because of that they are not able to pay the loan on the time and that is why 1969 balance crisis 
came. But everything is not bad about first term. You know, Marcos was a really well-educated person himself. So he knew the importance of the education. And these are the list of high schools and universities year-wise made by Marcos in his first presidency term. Look at this. These are the uh, high schools made during his first term and these are the universities made in his first term. So he always gave good importance to the education. Around this 1969 crisis, again the new election came. The new election was held in November 1969 and again with the big margin, Marcos win his second presidency. His second term as a president started from 1969 to 1972. He won that 1969 election with the big margin with the 61.47 percentage. So what does it mean? It means that people knew that whatever crisis happened in 1969 was not of his fault. It's because of wars and because of not getting reward from the development. And here comes the entry of the biggest political enemy of Marcos, Benigno S. Equino Jr. He was really strong and he had a big support from the crowd. During his talks, Benigno was really able to convey his message to the people that Marcos is trying to turn whole Philippines into the garrison state. Garrison state, it means ruled by the military. So he started saying these things to the people and people started believing him. And he is able to create unrest among people and that's how he is able to create small moderate groups who are against Marcos administration and later on these moderate groups started being big and started being in radical left ideology groups and when Marcos administration realized about these groups they started answering them with the military power and that's where the famous 1970 protest started. The protest and unrest which is started with the small moderate group now become a big group and then the series of protest demonstration chaos started in whole Philippines and again Marcos administration gave answer with the military force. According to the US data, around 50 to 100,000 people injured during those protests. But according to the Marcos's data, there are only 7 to 8,000 people were injured. Another biggest event happened in 1971, the Plaza Miranda bombing. Bomb blasts were happened in Plaza Miranda while Liberal Party have their reign. And in that bombing, 9 people died and 95 people got injured. Now again, the question arised that Marcos did this. But Marcos gave excuse that we haven't done this. This is done by own Liberal Party to make pressure on Marcos's and to give bad image of Marcos administration. And that event, that bombing created a huge chaos, huge unrest in most parts of the Philippines. And that is why on September 23, 1972, President Marcos announced martial law in whole country. But let me tell you one amazing thing is, during his second term, during this lot of chaos, unrest, protest, he never left behind education. This is the list of high schools and universities built in his second term. As you can see here, there are so many high schools and universities built in his second term in spite of so many problems. And that's how the era of famous 
Philippines martial law started. The martial law started from 1972 to 1981. Marcos administration publicly announced martial law through his press secretary Francisco Tartan. He announced in front of the press on September 23, 1972. And obviously, like any country it happens, blame game has started. Marcos is saying that Benigno Liberal Party did this and they are obviously saying that because of the chaos, because of so many problems, this is happening. And that is the reason. Benigno and his supporters, especially some NPA leaders, they are detained but without charges. After detaining them, there is still so much chaos and talks in whole Philippines. So, because of the lot of pressure, Marcos government put martial law on vote in 1973. And the result was really shocking. 90.77 people think that the martial law is a good step. So the question is, if 90.77% people think that martial law was necessary, then who are these people who are doing uh, protests, who are doing demonstration, who are uh, creating chaos? So we can think both sides. It can be a bad side it can be a good side it can be through marcos or it can be through the oppositions during this time marcos has understood that there is so much of chaos and he has so many enemies so he started developing and expanding his military forces and that's where he came in the eyes of international media one side there is so much of chaos, unrest, protest and one side there is a huge army involvement and that's where gross human right violation occurred and because US giving so much of aid to the Philippines, pressure was given to the newly elected President Jimmy Carter to talk with the Marcos administration and release Benigno and his supporters. But despite of so much of pressure, Marcos did not release Benigno. Instead, he announced Philippines parliamentary election in 1978. And Philippines parliamentary election held in April 1978. And again, Marcos won that election with the 150 seats. And that's how his third term as a president has started. Along with the martial law situation, Marcos administration also facing three internal wars. As you can see here, Battle of Holo, Patikul Massacre and Pata Island Massacre. And once again, the thing which really amazed me is again during this martial law problem, he never lose his control or focus on education. These are the high schools and universities he made during the martial law. Just look at this. These are the high schools and these are the universities he built during the martial law. After winning with the so many seats, Marcos again become president of Philippines third time between 1981 to 1986. Now his third term was really critical because uh, Philippines is already facing so many wars, internal wars, out wars, Philippines is facing loans problem, Philippines is facing unrest protest that bring economy down. But the real problem started in 1981 when US go through the recession and because of the recession US left Philippines vulnerable and they increased the interest rate on the loans and that's where Philippines economy went down so drastically. Another big event happened on August 21st 1983 when 
Benigno Jr. assassinated on Tarlac Airport. And that's where fall of Marcos administration started. In 1985, assemblymen signed resolution for calling impeachment of government against Marcos. And this is the time when Marcos's health started deteriorating. He got kidney problems, he got lupus arithmetic, and he also got chronic autoimmune disease. He got kidney transplant, but his body rejected the kidney and he again tried and tried for second transplant but on September 28, 1989 he died. But wait, it's not end yet. A part of his bad health, a part of so many problems, in his third term also he never lose his focus on education. This is the list of high schools and universities during his third term as a president. As you can see, this is the high school and this is the universities. So if we want to summarize his presidency years, he done so many things for the country. He did infrastructure, he did expansion of the military, he did lot of good work in education, he built so many bridges, he built so many roads. He also developed labor sector for skilled workers and also we should not forget the crisis, we should not forget the protest, we should not forget the political killings. So this was the story of Ferdinand Marcos. There are so many events happened in his life. His life is full of lows and highs. And I just included the important one. I would be really happy that if you share more knowledge about Ferdinand Marcos, about his family, I would be glad. Please comment, please talk with me. And uh, through you, I will learn more uh, about uh, Marcos family, about Philippines. So feel free to talk with me. Your every kind of uh, comments are, are welcome. I'm here to talk. Correct me if I'm wrong somewhere. Uh, if you want to share about something, if you want to talk about something, I'm, I'm already here for you. And those who are new, I request, please, I really, really work hard. Subscribe my channel, share it, like it, and uh, see you in another interesting video.